So I have the absolute pleasure of introducing your wonderful host, um, Wilkin Riviera. He's going to be talking about learning Go through open source. So programming languages require practice, patience, and tons of application, but that doesn't mean you have to do it in isolation. In his talk, Wilkin's gonna share with us his journey, learning Go through open source, and how contributing to these open source projects can be a platform for learning at all levels. So I'm gonna pass it over to Wilkin. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Angelica. Uh, let me go ahead and start sharing my screen here. Let's see. Um, okay, cool. Does everyone see what I see? Uh, learning through open source? Yep. Yes. All right. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in today. Um, for those just joining in, my name is Wilkin Rivera. Uh, my talk is uh, titled Learning Through Open Source. Originally, it was titled Learning Go Through Open Source, but after going through this whole journey, I realized I learned so much more than just Go, so I decided to change the title. Uh, today, I'll be sharing my experience. Oh, okay. Today, I'll be sharing my experience um, with um, learning Go through open source, specifically through a project called uh, Exorcism, which we've heard of already. Um, and like I said, I'm a big fan of it. So um, for those that are joining in right now that may not be familiar with Exorcism, you know, the, the short version is that it's an online platform for folks who are interested in programming to level up um, their skills to practice and mentoring. So if you haven't already checked it out, I do recommend it. Um, I hope to, in this talk, I hope to share my learnings, what I learned from this experience, and also uh, provide some tips on what I think, um, on how I think the open source community can be uh, a platform for learning. And I think someone early on, uh, and I apologize, I think it was Denise, or maybe Dennis, I apologize if I got the pronunciation wrong, on how someone, you know, in the business, sort of constrained by business um, time, or, yeah, with business constraints, how they can kind of level up or learn any language. So this might be something for you. All right. So a little about myself. Um, my name is Wilkin Rivera. I'm based out of Miami, Florida, here in the United States. I am a, software, a senior software engineer at HashiCorp, working on the Packer project. Um, I spend most of my time writing uh, tooling for the cloud um, in Go. And when I'm not at work, I'm either reading uh, working with the Go community, such as events like this, or spending lots of time with my family. I have two girls uh, that are very active. So a little heads up, you know, this talk um, is intended for folks with existing programming experience, and I'll explain why um, as we go through the talk, but it definitely is applicable to uh, first timers. So uh, don't feel like you have to tune out um, because there's some learnings that you can get from this, but I definitely recommend having at least experience with one programming language, Git, and are comfortable with reading other people's code. So quick overview of the talk, uh, why open source, my path to go, um, learning through open source, my takeaways, uh, how to get started for first timers, and then my closing slide. So the great question, why open source? So learning a new language is tough, right? Um, especially when you don't have a consistent way of learning and sort of applying what you've learned. Um, they say that the right, the, the key to learning a, a language is to sort of immerse yourself in it. Put yourself in situations where you're forced to interact with the language uh, to help improve your learning experience. And to be honest, like spoken languages, the same advice is applicable to learning a new programming language, a new programming language like we heard in some of the previous talks. Uh, pro programming languages require a lot of practice, patience, and tons of application but you don't have to do it alone. Uh, open source projects, I think, offer a wide sort of view into new communities, a virtual space, if you will, where folks of all walks of life can communicate, share ideas, opinions, uh, lessons learned, um, you know, and, and help each other grow within that space. Uh, yes, you know, it's true that there's a lot of development going on in that space, but really that's just a fraction of what's going on in the open source space. So a little about how I got started. Uh, I didn't start right off the bat in open source with Go, so I'll kind of walk you to that, to that story. I'll walk you to that story, sorry. Um, so I started off by attending Gotham Go. It's uh, Gotham Go, for those that don't know, it's uh, New York's yearly conference. And I, I believe it started back in 2014. Uh, and I went to Gotham Go, not knowing any Go at all, but a good friend of mine was um, into Go and he asked me to join, so I, I followed along. Um, at that conference, I definitely, you know, I was interested in learning Go, 
uh, a bit, um, but didn't really know where to start. So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time on the train sort of thinking, I lived in, uh, for context, I lived in New York City then. Uh, I now live in Miami, been here a year. So uh, I spent a lot of time on the train sort of thinking about what would I write, you know, and, you know, where to get started. So uh, I took the usual path that one takes, uh, the tour of Go, Go by Examples, the Go programming book, Bill Kennedy's Go in Action book, uh, you know, a bunch of little exercises here and there, but I still had trouble immersing myself in the language, right? Uh, to be honest, Go was not something I was working with professionally, so finding projects and making time was a little hard. But in 2016, that's when I had my aha moment. You know, I attended Gotham Go for a second time and things changed. I had an opportunity to see the talk by um, Mind the Gap by Katrina Owen, and it's where she actually introduced uh, the Gotham Go to exorcism. Um, and it was at that moment that I was, I told my friend like, oh, this is it, this is what I've been waiting for. So after Katrina's talk, I immediately signed up for exorcism and began working on solving the, goal, the, the problems. Uh, this, so little context, exorcism, at this time, didn't have any mentorship or mentor or mentee uh, uh, aspect to it. It was just purely here a bunch of here a bunch of exercises. Go ahead and write the code. Uh, so I started very early on, um, and at, before Go, I was writing in Python and Ruby. So I spent some time, you know, on the exercises, writing them in Ruby first, and then translating them into Go to kind of help me build that confidence that hey, I can solve this problem. Um, I carved out. You know, uh, I had one child then, she was she was about three. So I carved out my weekends, a seven to 10 a.m. slot in the morning um, where I would go to my local coffee shop. For those that are in New York, there's this coffee shop in Forest Hills called Martha's, Martha's Bakery, highly recommend it. Uh, you can just tell them you know me, they'll take care of you. Um, and, and every Tuesday night I would, you know, write some Go code. So um, during the weekend and during the, you know, on Tuesdays, I was all pure Go and um, it was something that just I, I couldn't get enough of. I was really hooked, right? So, um, which really is sort of the the predecessor to, or the yeah, the, to 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 the motivation, I guess, to to the next part of this journey, which I was really curious about exorcism, right? So I've contributed to open source prior to this, but really small. Um, it was again, it was in Ruby, um, and it was you know just writing tests, or you know I say just writing tests, but it was adding tests to a project. So I was already familiar with uh, contributing to open source, and we use GitHub at the office, so I was really familiar with that. So um, you know I was really curious about exorcism, and I thought, oh maybe I could help. You know I can learn a little more by contributing. So I introduced myself to Katrina Owen. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous there, just sending a, a, an email, but she seemed very friendly when I met her at Gotham Go. Um, so she gladly responded and pointed me to a few good issues under the CLI repo and the contributing guide. And, and after reading through those guides and getting myself familiar with the code base, I opened up my first official PR, you know, my first official Go PR, um, which took me a little bit to submit, but I submitted it. And that PR is sort of, uh, had 47 comments. And I think there was so much within that one PR that really just sort of set the tone for the rest of my journey and, um, and, and the things that I value now as an open source maintainer. So my first thing is really in a goal specific way, I learned about testing. After my first PR, you know, I, I say I waited, you know, just refreshing for the for the uh, for the code review to come through, yeah, I know that you get notifications on GitHub, but you know, I was I was very eager to see what comes through the wire. Uh, so um, got my first review, and it was a really kind review, um, and it provided lots of guidance. You know, um, one of them starting with testing. Um, the first lesson learned was how to write tests for a small CLI app um, and how to use the HTTP test package. Up until this PR, I was working with Exorcism and you know using the um, using 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 the unit testing package there to, to learn how to write tests. But at this PR, when it came to this PR, I was asked to write some testing for um, an MPI, an API endpoint that I needed to mock out for the versioning tool. So um, it was a good way to sort of uh, learn from code that Katrina had already written and um, and then get introduced into the HTTP test package. And, and it gave me an opportunity to ask questions. I didn't feel like I had to learn it on my own. Um, you know, so with that, I think, you know, one of, one of my biggest sort of recommendations when coming across a new code base is always start with the test, take a look at what is being tested, trying to get a, an idea of how to, um, 
you know, how the code, how the, how the functions or, or the various types, you know, are being leveraged. And I think that's a good way to sort of introduce yourself into the code base. My second lesson um, really is not go specific, but it was, you know, um, I think uh, it's, it was sort of a very interesting concept that I've heard of, but never really thought too much about. So, so before Go, I was big on keeping code as generic and reusable as possible, you know, um, referred to as, as dry, uh, an acronym that means don't repeat yourself, you know, try not to duplicate too much code. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with keeping things dry, but sometimes being dry or too dry can make things a little harder than they need to be. So from this comment that I got from Katrina, you know, I went down the path of undrawing my code, if you will, and learned a little more about Go's philosophy on writing simple and effective, you know, maintainable programs with the idea that, hey, a little, a little duplication is okay. Um, you know, and I definitely learned uh, this, you know, big tidbit was, if you see someone's code and there's a lot of duplication throughout it, really try to understand why it was duplicated before trying to dry it up, right? Try to, try to gain as much context as you can before you start uh, changing things. And, and then the, thing, the big sort of third takeaway was um, readability. I think, you know, I think, I, I think this is stressed really highly within the Go community about readability above all, right? And making sure that you write writable code. And I think Bill would attest to that. Um, but um, definitely, you know, we spend more time uh, writing, uh, reading code, shall I say, than, than writing code. So it's important that code is readable and doesn't hide any context. So, you know, I, I like this comment because it, while it doesn't really go into the details of the code itself, I think, you know, it, it really gives uh, uh, a perspective about focusing on readability, even from something as simple as a comment, you know, so, um, and even the way the, the the suggestion, if you will, on GitHub was, was framed, right? So I think giving rationale behind the suggestion really helps make the reader, you know, the, or the, the person getting the review understand when and why the suggestion or the command should be applied. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll hear in the Go community uh, that it's very, you know, something is not, um, not idiomatic Go, right? But sometimes we don't really hear why, you know, or, or, or why the approach that was taken, you know, um, is, is wrong, right? It, you know, it's just saying it's not idiomatic, it's, it's not really enough. And I think Dave Cheney, the, the Zen of Go, if I, I um, sort of talks about that. And I think that was his motivation for that. So um, I got a little glimpse of that early on from this one comment, you know, and, you know, as an engineer, I, prior to learning Go, I think I was in the game, I don't know, seven years already. And, um, you know, I was, I was not one to sort of provide a lot of context. You know, I, I was that person who just assumed that the reason for my suggestion were sort of common knowledge. So um, it, I'm safe to say, it was safe to say that I was wrong. So, um, you know, I really learned the importance of adding context and, uh, and the idea of just leaving a good comment on um, within GitHub and the reviews. And a nice little tidbit, you know, I learned about this, this idea of a nitpick, you know, a nitpick comment on GitHub. You know, sometimes, especially when at work, when you would leave a comment you know, it would be a suggestive comment, but people would think like, oh, you're asking me to change it or an official request. Um, and I, I, this use of nitpick was like mind blowing because it's like, oh, like I, I have the option to apply it or not, you know, if I want to. And um, over the course of the years of contributing to um, exorcism, there were a lot of like, hey, here's a nitpick, you know, apply it if you want to, if not, feel free to merge. And I, and I thought, you know, that was a nice little tidbit to have. And it's something again, that I apply um, now. So uh, we fast forward a couple of years. Um, I was uh, already actively maintaining to exorcism. I was an advocate for the project. You know, I was part of this team, a part of the community, um, you know, and this was happening all outside of my office. In my office, you know, I was writing, still writing Ruby um, and, and, and deploying infrastructure to AWS. Go was happening outside um, on the weekends and on that Tuesday night. Um, you know, I like to say, you know, I was I was learning how to write Go. I was reading people's code. I was interacting with fellow gophers from around the world. I was, you know, really big on going to Gotham Go and meetups and different conferences. Um, I would say that, you know, I just wasn't part of the community. I was helping build it with the contributions that I was making to exorcism. Um, and I took every opportunity that I could to, um, to really share that knowledge, you know, um, 
having that that feeling, that sense of purpose, you know, I branched out to the GoBridge team, you know, um, and and try to figure out what GoBridge was about and how I can get involved. I actually TA'd uh, my first TA session with GoBridge was um, was at uh, with with Johnny Borcasset um, out in Baltimore, which was a good five hour you know drive, five hour drive from home, about a six hour train ride but it was worth it, right? Um, I learned a little more about Go, and more importantly, I learned about the importance of having a safe environment for folks to learn. Um, uh, interesting fact, I actually met my future, my future manager um, at, for HashiCorp at this event. So, um, you know, after this GoBridge training, I eventually gave my first Go, my, I eventually gave my own very first GoBridge training. I joined the open source group at Condé Nast, which was my previous employer and helped sort of push that along. As you can see, um, hopefully you can see in the image, I was sponsoring exorcism. Um, I joined the Golang uh, NYC group, um, hosted a few of them there. Um, joined, I officially, Bill was kind enough to make me official part of the GoBridge team um, and, you know, give me the opportunity to do things like this. And finally, you know, I became a, an open source ma uh, maintainer for the HashiCorp team. I started off with Terraform and now I'm officially, you know, um, developing on the, the Packer project. So um, I like to sort of, uh, the, the picture on the right there of that ThinkPad, that's actually my laptop uh, that I use and that I'm presenting from because those stickers present the journey that I've taken, right? Um, the cloud guy is the sticker, this, the, the little cloud with the wave. That's my kid's uh, um, sticker for me, you know, that she ensured that I had it on my laptop and I, I love probably the best sticker on there, but um, exorcism. You know, that's that's the initial logo for exorcism that was created. And, um, you know, my contributions to um, Logstash was uh, my first official PR that I opened, Gotham Go. So this this laptop, I like to carry it with me because it really kind of tells that journey that I took. So uh, all that, you know, um, you know, um, that's, should I say, that's my story and I'm sticking to it, right? So uh, what did I learn from this whole experience of contributing to open source aside from more Go code? Um, you know, I learned that, you know, that learning a language by writing on an active project helps keep you motivated, right? And I think um, we all know if, it, if you're working towards something, um, you know, it, it, it helps sort of keep you accountable. But when you have other people that are working on that project with you uh, remotely or, or physically next to you, you know, it definitely helps keep you motivated and pushes you forward. Um, you know, I also found that just reading other people's code was super helpful, right? Because um, it, it really, uh, as, as, in, as an engineer who's been in the game for a little bit, you know, we're kind of set in our own ways. Um, so it's really helpful to see how other people do things and, you know, the decisions that they make and, and learn from that and sort of, you know, take an opportunity to reflect and say, hey, am I, could I do this better? Um, or, or, you know, can I do this differently, right? I think, you know, better is, you know, up, 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 up for interpretation. Um, another thing I learned was um, and the importance of learning from the guidance of code reviews, right? I think, you know, uh, we get code reviews and sometimes it's like, all right, just get a review so we can get it in. But there's so much bits of knowledge in there that, you know, that, that gets shared and, and just dropped really quickly. So I think it's really important to pay attention to the code reviews that are coming through the wire. Engage yourself in the code review. If you're joining, if you're joining a open source project for the first time, really engage yourself in the code review process to see, uh, you know, what you can learn from there and how you could add value yourself. Um, you know, one thing I like to say, if you don't understand the code after you've done reviewing it, uh, I think that's a good comment to leave, right? If, if it's hard for you to understand, um, then chances are it's going to be hard for someone else to understand. And possibly the original author, you know, once they're done, you know, um, working on that code. So definitely feel encouraged to leave that comment. Uh, another thing I learned is welcome feedback. You know, I think, again, as, as an experienced engineer, it can sometimes be hard to hear that your approach either missed the mark or, you, your, or that the code review that you gave wasn't all that helpful. We're, we're human, so you know, uh, continue, you know, we're continuously learning. So uh, try your best to just um, be open and welcome and, and welcome any feedback that comes your way, even the not so good feedback, right? You know, there's always something good to read to take from it. Um, um, but it's uh, it's it's always worth is worth being curious about the feedback and challenge yourself to improve. You know, and by improving, that don't necessarily mean that you have to improve yourself. If someone gave you, you know, a bad comment or, you know, um, 
on, on a review, it's an opportunity for you to speak to this person and say, hey, you know, I, this comment um, kind of came off a certain ways that was, was that your intent? You know, and it, it really kind of gives you an opportunity to prove your, improve this other person, thus improving your environment, thus improving you as a whole. Um, and I think the last thing, you know, which sort of ties into that last point was really, I learned to be kind, right? Uh, to, quote Ryan, to, to quote Rodney Dangerfield, it's hard out there. So, you know, it's always good to seek to be kind and open in your interactions and help foster uh, a really safe and encouraging environment, right? You know, uh, taking, taking a step like putting out a comment or a code into the internet and not knowing what's gonna happen to it, um, it's, it's daunting, but um, you know, it doesn't mean that the experience has to be unpleasant. So, um, and I think that starts with you being kind, you know, and then you uh, trying to ensure that the folks that you're interacting with are being just as kind, if not kinder. Um, and, you know, I will say that your interactions in the open source world can prove very fruitful in, uh, for future endeavors. So, um, you know, treat it as you would anything else you would um, in your life that you want to be a part of. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is a little weird. I'm just like talking to this screen. I can't really see anyone. So, <laughs> um, so um, for first time contributors, you know, I was there and I think one thing you may not know is that your inside is gold, right? You, you and um, really, you know, we as maintainers and, and contributors are sometimes too deep in the weeds, um, writing the code that we, you know, or, or the docs or the tools that we work with on a daily basis. So um, it's not always, um, uh, should I say, friendly to newcomers, right? There's a lot of context that you may not have. So if you find yourself um, on a project that you're really interested in, you want to jump in and you're having a hard time jumping in, leave that comment. I'm sure that, you know, the maintainers or the, the folks that are running the project would appreciate it because at the end of the day, you know, the community is only as, a product is only as vibrant as its community. So we want to make sure that has a very low barrier of entry. Um, you know, um, with that, I say the same holds true for docs, you know, documentation, you know, if you want to start there, if you're not quite ready for the code and you start a documentation, you know, take a, um, if something seems incorrect or incomplete, leave a question, post, you know, post a comment, um, you know, there's a good chance that the maintainers have missed something or, 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 or maybe, you know, you have some insight that um, we don't just have yet, right? So I think it's always good to post that up. Uh, again, same holds true for features, you know, I, I, I you know, we find a lot of a lot of comments on, on the Packer project that sort of come our way where we have the feature documented one way, but it behaves differently, right? Um, and sometimes that may seem like a bug, um, but it turns out the docs just weren't updated, right? So that's an opportunity for you to contribute, an opportunity for you to meet the team, right? And I think, I, I say the team, because right? I think anytime you contribute to open source, you have the potential to start working with a new team. So you want to treat it that way, right? You are essentially helping these folks uh, better their product and better uh, your user experience. So think about the features that you come across. Do they work differently? Have things changed? If you happen to know Azure, for example, has changed their upstream API and you know we're using something different, please speak up. I think that's super helpful. Um, and you know, I, I would say that learning, um, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this before, it's, it helps if you have experience with a programming language or comfortable with reading other people's code uh, because it definitely, it helps you sort of get started. But um, if you are learning how to program through open source for the first time, you know, that can be a little tough, right? Um, especially if you select a very active project, but you know, I don't think that it should stop you from contributing. Right. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the tips on how to get started. And I think if you use those tips, it could help you start to level up uh, a bit on the project, on the language. And then also, I really encourage you to take events like this, right? Reach out the people that are here at this meetup, reach out to them. This is, you know, this is your community. Start the opportunity to network and see how it is that you can learn from them and vice versa, right? Like I said, insight, uh, a beginner's insight is always oh, gold. So there's lots of opportunity to learn. So um, feel free to ask questions, you know, and 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 uh, and, and just po and um, leave comments, right? Nice comments, please, but uh, definitely ask questions because there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, with that, I I'll say this: I say contributing to open source can be very intimidating, uh, especially when you don't know where uh, what to expect, right? So this is where just reading active or recently closed pull requests can help, right? You get a sense, you can get a sense of what. The communication uh, is like on this project, um, you know, and you could um, get get a sense for the for the for the people involved, 
right? But, um, you know, the truth of the matter there is that open source projects are not all the same. Some are really good to be a part of, kind, there's a lot to learn and some are not, you know, but I think uh, one piece of advice I'd like to give when you open source is that if you find yourself on a project that you're not really happy with, or you, you know, by happy, I mean, you, you feel like you're not learning or the, con the contributing aspect doesn't seem all that nice or, you know, conducive to, to motivate you, um, congratulations, right? You just sort of learned what project you don't want to be a part of or where you, what environment you don't want, you know? Um, maybe congratulations is a, is a strong word, but it's definitely a learning opportunity, you know, because you, you get to see what you don't like. And, you know, when, if that happens, definitely take the opportunity to say thanks uh, to the maintainers for the time and then and move on and you can start somewhere else, right? That's the beauty of the open source communities. There's so many of them and, you know, you can, you can get your foot, your feet wet in any, you know, in any project um, and, you know, in various different ways. So uh, highly encouraged to, to reach out and try to get involved. Um, for those that are inspired and want to get started on the open source side, um, definitely try to start by finding one or two projects of interest, preferably something that has a small footprint. You know, uh, I think the more code, the more context you kind of need to have to get to get um, acclimated. So I think if you start small, that'd be great. And if you're a big, if you're a fan of a big project, that's okay. I think just try to narrow down the scope of, of the contribution to kind of help you keep focused and reduce the time spent on the context, you know, um, you know, it's like, as John said, it's about, you know, the journey um, to the destination, right? I, I, I'm sure, I apologize, John, I'm sure I got that wrong, but it's about, it's about the journey, right? More so than the destination and things will happen slowly over time. Um, so, you know, as you, as you come across this project, really uh, think about uh, how the project is behaving, right? So, you know, learn how the, how the team works by reviewing their active PRs, look at their closed PRs, you know, get a feel for the communication style, uh, look for sort of comments that they leave, you know, do they have, do they have some general expectation when it comes to testing or naming conventions? Just try to get yourself familiar with what they look for within the pull request. Over at HashiCorp, we have a few, few of our projects have documents about what does a good pull request look like? That's a good document to read so that you can, you know, kind of get yourself started. Um, and then once you figured it out, you know, whether it's a bug and enhancement or documentation, start, start the, you know, looking at the contribution guides and, and make your first change. I think that, um, you know, you, that, that initial, uh, that initial sort of leap may seem, uh, it's maybe a little difficult, but once you do it, it's going to feel great. And, you know, um, you'll, you'll have the opportunity, or hopefully it'll feel great. Uh, but you'll have the opportunity to really start to meet and work with new people who could essentially become your, you know, your, your new teammates in the future. You know, I know there's lots of projects who generally hire from the community, um, you know, and it's because we get an opportunity to see what you bring to the table, you know, not when I say what you bring to the table, I don't mean like your goal, you know, your, your coding um, skills, but more so about like how you interact with teams remotely, how do you, how do you break down problems, you know, and, you know, um, how do you, how do you communicate with the community? So there's so many different things that really show um, that when you work in the open source space that I think that um, you can benefit from by, you know, jumping in. Um, so with that, I say thank you for your time. Um, and today, in, in, in listening to this talk, this is a picture of me and my daughter at that infamous coffee shop. So after, you know, the 10 a.m. slot, the time was up, I would, her and my wife would come and join us for uh, macaroons and cakes and muffins and all types of things, you know, to, to sort of celebrate the, the three hours of, uh, of coding. So, um, you know, I really just kind of wanted to put that up there. Uh, if she was here with next to me, she would gladly say hello and, and welcome everyone from the community. She's a big fan. And, a big part of my growth. So uh, again, the name is Wilkin Rivera. You know, I'm happy to be here today. If you need, if you want to reach me, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Wilkin Rivera. On GitHub, I'm at NY Wilkin. If you want to contribute, um, you know, we're always looking for new contributors on the Packer project. Um, you know, happy to help you find your way there. And if you want to talk about any other project, you can reach out to me, Bill. You know, we anyone, Angelica, anyone here will gladly help you find your way. In, in the world of Go and open source and hook you up with the right connections. All right, thank you. <laughs>